Well, it's time to discuss the sport of kings. The 2023 running of the Epsom Oaks, a Group 1 flat horse race in Great Britain for three-year-old fillies, took place on Friday. The Oaks lived up to its billing as veteran jockey Frankie de Tori, in his final Oaks race, steered Soul Sister to victory. The win is de Tori's seventh Oaks win and his second Group 1 victory on the day. So Lance, this is his swan song here in the saddle. Should he reconsider his retirement? I'm not thinking so. He's 52 years old and he has done everything as far as a jockey is concerned that jockeys aspire to achieve. He has won big races all over the world. Every continent he has won big races on. And um, if he decides that this is his last year, even though I understand the question because he's having so much success, there could be a temptation for him, for him to change his mind. But I would, I would think that he would not change his mind. Well, speaking after the win, he was asked about, you know, how he continues to reap all these successes. And he said, it's mental. And I felt that stood out for me mm. because he says, you know, it's more about his mind and being prepared and whatnot yeah. than just execution yeah but the thing is he has so much experience and confidence and know-how as a reinsman mm -hmm. that he really has no equal at the moment we remember george davis flurry um flourishing praises on him it's day favorite, after day right? on yeah by far and um if you looked at how he won the race today he had to go to a plan b because when the horses came out of the starting gates he was slowly out and um he didn't he that wasn't the race plan the race plan was for him to be close to the lead there he is at the back in the red or burgundy silks on the outside right slowly coming forward because he had been outpaced which wasn't the plan he should have been closer but by the time they got here it was obvious that he was picking up the pace picking up the pace and and was gonna win here because if you look at his movements in the saddle there in the red silks He's doing a lot less than the jockeys in front of him are doing. Ryan Moore, who is aboard the favorite Save the Last Dance, has already gone for his whip left-handed. And uh, the jockeys are pumping a lot harder than he is. So we are approaching the furlong pole here. And the Tory doesn't start really riding hard until this point. Yes. Which tells you that he knew that he had a lot of horse under him. So um, this is a quality rider that, you know, you don't. these riders don't appear... Um, you know, every every day. He's a special, special, special talent. And to be 52 years old and having the kind of success that he's still having tells you a lot about his quality. And I think this win reminds us of the importance of experience because another rider at the back of the field would start to panic. Yes. And that goes back to what you said about yeah. taking out the whip and yeah. going harder yeah. Yeah. and things could just end up chaotic. Yeah. But Frankie de Tori, who has done this so many times before, I mean, yeah. it's his seventh Oaks win. Yeah. Just, he, you know, he relaxed and he allowed the horse to do what he knows the horse can do. And it comes back also to the relationship between the jockey and the horse. Yeah, knows a horse well and um he has had so many successes with trainer John Gostin, and um, today was just another fabulous day for, for Frankie de Tori. He won two group, group one races today because he won the Coronation Cup about Emily Upjohn and um, just had two major wins today in the space of a couple of hours. All right, well, congrats again. But speaking of Frankie de Tori, he'll be in action in the Derby on Saturday, riding the favorite, Arrest. Lance, in his swan song year, he could leave the Epsom racing with a famous double of the Oaks and Derby. But the question is, can he get it done? O obviously he can. Um, mm -hmm. The odds at the moment are suggesting that he is one of the fancied horses going in. Um, I think we have a quick look at the odds for this event and arrest is a joint favorite with uh, August, August uh, Rodin, yeah. who was a very disappointing unplaced finisher in the Guineas earlier on this month, or last month it was, it was yeah. early May. Um, but Ryan Moore's Mount August Rodon is at 7-2 to two, along with Arrest, so they are joint favourites at the moment. But based on the Tories experience, class and the ability of Arrest to won at Chester over the Derby trip a couple of weeks ago, um, he's on a good ride here and he could easily well complete the, the Oaks and Derby double. And it would be a great way to end the Oaks because, as we said, he's getting ready for retirement. And, 
you know, we, we may not see him again, which will be very sad for George because he loves him. <laughs> but yeah, top stuff from him. We're yeah. going to well, continue. The British flat racing season will go on until later this year, but obviously he's going to ride at the Breeders' Cup and so yeah. on in November. But he has said that after 2023, he's done. Yeah. Well, we're still with horse racing. The Jamaica 1000 and 2000 guineas are to be contested this weekend. And Gerard Morris Seeley gives us a preview. With the prep events now a matter of history, racing from Kimanas Park is set to hit another gear with the official start of the classic season. On Saturday, 12 of the island's best native-bred three-year-old fillies will compete in the 49th edition of the 1000 guineas. Meanwhile, on Sunday, a 12-horse view will line up for this year's edition of the 2000 guineas. The two grade one events will be contested over a mile or 1,600 meters for a purse of 3.7 million Jamaican dollars or approximately 24,000 US dollars. Champion trainer Jason DaCosta will have six entries from a field of 12 in the 1,000 guineas. Talita, winner of the Portmore States, and Mamma Mia, who was the runner-up, are his two most fancied entries. Well, out of the six entries I have, um, Mamma Mia and Talita are the, are the two that are working best. There were one, two in the, um, in the Portmore, and um, they've had a pretty smooth preparation coming into this race. So I'm, spe uh, I'm expecting um, good runs out of out of both. We're coming down to the 1,000 guineas and Mamma Mia and the group. I don't know, she get beaten by the Portmore State by Talita and two of them training well coming down. Talita has gone 126, she gone 128, so you know, so the two of them are the main ass in the race right now. Where I love to hope for the best, but Talita, if anything, I don't know, she's the anti-post favorite. So, are the two of them see me and this is still a mate, so training have six asses in the race, so. Also expected to feature prominently will be Ian Passard's gorgeous entry, Utilicious, who lost her undefeated status in the Portmore. In Sunday's 2000 Guineas, Richard Azan's impressive entry, Mojito, is expected to deliver another intoxicating performance. Having blitzed the field in the Kingston to win by an impressive 15 lengths, veteran trainer Richard Azan is confident his charge will deliver once more. First of all, Mojito is a improving, developing three-year-old, quite a big size horse. He has been running really well and it seems that he'll run all distances and especially distances that that uh, the 2,000 guineas it for long. Um, Post time for the eagerly anticipated 1,000 guineas is scheduled for 4.30 p.m., 5.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. Meanwhile, Sunday's 2,000 guineas has a post time of 4 p.m. in Jamaica, 5 Eastern Caribbean time. All right, so Lance, we're starting. You have to make a prediction, mm -hmm. and you're not allowed to go with the favorite, Talita. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> well, actually, I, I think Bootalicious, who was disappointing in the Portmore, um, had looked prior to the Portmore as, as being the best three-year-old filly. Um, she disappointed there, but I quite like her to rebound from that and probably win here. But it's going to be a good race. It's an open race. Um, but I like Bootalicious, currently showing 3-1 to one in the morning line odds. Um, Talita is the 5-2 to two morning line favorite. You heard Jason Costa, the trainer of Talita and Mama Mia speak confidently earlier on in that piece from Gerard Morrissey. But I like Boo Delicious. I'm not sure exactly why she ran so badly in the Portmore last month, but it's a quality three-year-old filly and um, I, look, I expect her to rebound and um, I think she can win here. Yeah, and what about the 2000? Are you going for the drink, Mojito? Well, you have to. <laughs> Mojito appears to be the best three-year-old in the country at the moment yeah. and it would be foolhardy to oppose him. Four to five the morning line bet at the moment. And there are a couple of entries here who won their last outings, like the Five Horse Ability, um, Rhythm Buzz, number seven, and Money Miser, number eight. But none of these horses appears to have the quality of Mojito, um, given um, the quality he had shown, even as a two-year-old, because he was a champion two-year-old for 2022. Yeah. And Richie Azan is a Hall of Fame trainer, knows what he's doing. Um, I, I, it would, it, it's, it's, you, I don't want to say it's a foregone conclusion, because it's horse racing and things happen but it would be foolhardy to bet against Mojito. Obviously yeah. the best horse in the field. Well, it's Friday. Mojito sounds good for the 2,000 guineas. Yeah. Let's take a break. <laughs>
Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment.